screen. Okay. I mean, the most will be maybe five people watch this video. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting for our Netflix uh, um, to, to take on and go, wow, these people are just so interesting. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the continuing saga of our, our family drama, our, our family history and um, whatever's going on in our in our lives at the moment. Tatiana, how long do you think we have you today? I will need to leave around uh, two. So okay. for an hour, if it's okay. okay. Maybe a little bit sure. less than an hour. You're welcome to stay as long as you want as to. As long as you want. I, I appreciate it. I just have another meeting already scheduled. Okay. So we'll we'll keep our show and tell on the short side so that we can talk with Tatiana too. Okay. Okay. All right. Susan, you're up. Well, does anybody else have anything? I I have nothing much, and I don't think the other two do either. Okay, so what happened is, um, let me look at my notes here. So Tatiana, I'm working on several different family trees, um, and my own has kind of gotten stuck and stalled. My family's from Slovenia, and my other half is from is long been in America forever. So I did my, my boyfriend's genealogy and I just kind of ignored it. It just, I just did what I could and didn't really go any further. He was only sort of interested in it. And they're Norwegian from Iowa and then Minnesota. So <laughs> my cat is being so loving all of a sudden. Why is that? Um, anyway, so I was approached a few weeks ago by some stranger on uh, um, by email saying they had a family photo for me. Well, I'm writing my boyfriend's genealogy on ancestry. So when they reached out, they reached out to him, but then he immediately sent it to me because I'm the one who knows all the stuff about his genealogy. So he did his DNA and that kind of thing. So that's how we knew this was a match with this the stranger who's living in Chicago. So long story short is I got very excited because we're so rarely contacted by anybody who shows any interest. And he was sending me emails and he was sending me photos and he was sending me um, other documents that he had. So I got very interested in this wing of my boyfriend's. The last name is Brown. And that's scary as it is because it's so common. And what we did is I started doing the genealogy in that, in that area. So it'd be my boyfriend's great, great, great grandfather so I just took off and ancestry in, when it comes to America is so pretty easy you know it's like it just keeps throwing you documents and throwing you documents and throwing you documents so it's not hard to get very far and then this guy sending me photographs and plus I knew that he was related to this man because of DNA I knew there was a link between my boyfriend and this stranger so I got it all plotted. It was all done. I, a couple of weeks ago, I said, I'm done as far as I'm going to go. You know, it's, I, I, I don't want to make a life out of this, <laughs> but one of the things that came up is I was able to get a death record. I requested a deck rec death card, which I'd never heard of before from um, some County site in, in Minnesota for the guy who was the uh, the man who immigrated to America, the father of, you know, he immigrated and then several kids came with him, but he was the oldest of the family. He was born in 1835 in Norway. So there was a death card. Now I thought, do I really want to get this death card? I mean, it's not going to have a lot of information on it, but it might have his parents' names. And I don't know a lot of well, I don't know anything about the Norwegian. I've been to, I've been to Oslo, but uh, I didn't know anything about it. So I've started reading about naming conventions. And it is insane what the Norwegians do. They don't stick with a naming pattern that is what we're used to, a conventional naming pattern. So I learned that. And I said, oh, this is going to be scary as heck. So I sent away the $10 for the death card, not it's knowing fair. what to get. Mm -hmm. Where? To Norway? No, no, it was in Minnesota because he oh. died in 1901 in Minnesota. Okay. And I already knew that. I already knew all that he died. So I, I didn't know. So I got two or three emails from this 
the uh, the Minnesota County saying, I'm not sure this is what you're going to want because, you know, it had like an FAQ saying, don't get your hopes up. It's going to be just a little card that's filled out whenever the person dies. But it did say that it might possibly have parents' names. And so I said, all right, it's $10. I'll send away for it. So I waited a couple of weeks and I got it. And what I got was really interesting and i'm going to show you a photo of it so let me pull it up on my they emailed it or or emailed it to me yeah but they were talking me out of it and there was a couple times i said okay whatever whatever i guess i won't i won't bother let me pull this over to the side so i can get to they're the norwegians they probably think ten dollars is too much <laughs> <laughs> well they're from Minis minnesota um and I thought, <laughs> well, they were saying, would you like to get something else? And I thought, well, I, I don't know what I would do with that. I'm like, just give me the card. Why, what is this such a big deal? Why, why do we have to have a... And you're lucky to have gotten such a quick response. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess they're not doing much over there. At the time, <laughs> except I thought, you know, for $10, why are you in it emailing me twice? Because well, anyway. it seems like a... You know, you're trying to cut back on costs, and that just doesn't seem like it would be a, a smart thing to do. So, okay, now that I've pulled up the document that I should have already had here, let me um, share the screen so I can show you this document. And I was all excited. I'll blow it up bigger for you. This is a death card. I was really excited because I thought I'm going to show you guys. Well, he died of consumption in 1901. And here's his name, Lars P. That's definitely a P, Brown. And I've got him as Lars L, Lars T. I've got several things. But here's his parents' names. This name, see? Yeah, Peterson. Like Peter Peterson with an E, not an I or an O. And this name, which looks like a squiggle, and this last name. So I was like, well, what the heck is that? That that's Hard kind read. of scary. And so Hard I did what Cindy taught us to do. What do you guys think I did? Naming pattern. <laughs> and, um, bring it back so I can see it. If, if, what did what did you so do? What did I do to figure this out? You don't need to look at it again. Hold on. Yeah, because it, it, it kind of got cut off, at least on my screen. Yeah, well, it's a bunch of squiggly lines. So <laughs> So you went to a census? Nope. No. Nope. Hmm. Um, you guys taught us. You taught, we did this, and it's it was brilliant. Oh, well, good. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Facebook and I found oh, the okay. genealogy group. Yeah. I joined it. Perfect. And which so, genealogy group? A Norwegian genealogy group. Oh. There's a bunch of them, so I just grabbed one, whatever. And I had to fill out a little questionnaire to get in and make sure I'm following the rules and all that kind of stuff. Remember, I did this with my Sylvie mm -hmm. and this once yeah. too, because right. what it's, what's clear is the name they came over with and the name that you're looking at documents in the U.S. are not the same names. It's different spellings, different, all kinds mm -hmm. of things are going to be different. I'm, I'm sure Tatiana would have the, you know, it'd be totally different letters. So at least in Norwegian, there's some letters that are, you know, look like English letters, but not all of them. So I gave this document because I had this document and I, and I put it up on Facebook and the message thing. And I said, oh, they must have loved that. Yes, they did. Because I said, please, I don't, I don't, I don't know what this says. And I don't know if what, even if I was to be able to read it clearly, I don't know if that's a what kind of spelling that is or what is a common name or you know what right. what it would go with that so so what they did is within oh i don't know an hour or two of getting you know putting up the thing they were so helpful they were like on it they came up well they started telling me what they think the names are and they said the 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 woman's name the 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 mother of this guy is Kari, K-A-R-I. And it's a quite a common name in Norway. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, that was important to me to be able to have that. And then they sent, um, then they just went nuts. 
they've sent me all kinds of stuff that they're pulling out of the National Archives and also, also off of Family Search that are uh, the um, like baptisms for his kids, his first marriage, um, then the census in 1875 in Norway, and then uh, where he's a widow so and with his with two of his kids and and. Google is translating a little bit for me, but then I opened up another screen that has Google Translate and I was able to translate things like, oh, this is the bridegroom. This is the bridegroom's father's name. This is the, this is the maid, you know, cause it says on the census, some word, I'm like, what does that mean? It just says maid. So I'm translating it a little bit at a time just so I can read it. And I woke up this, well, I went to bed last night. I was like, oh my gosh, look, I've got the baptisms for two sons. Um, and, uh, you know, some of it's off a little bit, like a few days from what I have or a year or so. And so in Ancestry, I'm just making uh, note of that and just saying, okay, well, this is, this is um, possible. And this is, you know, here's an alternative to what I'm going to say. And, and, you know, just normal stuff. I'm just documenting it. And then I get into it and I'm able to find the... I don't know where in the heck it went, but I'll show you really quick and then I'll probably be kind of done. Because I'm trying to go through it one piece at a time. So they gave me a lot of links. I woke up this morning, there was more links. Um, <laughs> and I asked tentatively, so any chance maybe you could find the, the their immigration to coming to the United States? Because that's kind of one of my weaknesses. I've got several areas I'm really not good at. And one of them is the... Um, the, the boat records coming over for some reason that just that just stuns me so i'll screen share with where i'm at now oh so they <laughs> so they said um oh where am i at why is it not let me see? i'm not screen sharing right now right no okay why is it saying why 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 is it that it's telling me that, oh, I should just hit screen share instead of sit and hitting screen share options. Maybe I will have a better luck with that. Okay, so I've gotten farther along. So his name's getting longer and longer <laughs> <laughs> because I'm putting the Norwegian spelling and I'm putting the American spelling. So his name was Lars P. Brown when I started and now I've added Patterson. And I've added Brunsvelt, and I've added this other one, a whole muddle. And what one of the people in the Norwegian genealogy group was telling me is Brunsvelt was, um, it looks like that was his last name before he came to America. And he took Brown um. from that. And <laughs> Brunsvelt was the farm he was on before he came to the United States. So Brown comes from the farm he was at before. And this is another name he had for a while, Home Metal. So Looks like his father's name. Yeah, well, but oh. Whoa. So here's here's what was the, that mother's last name? Well, yeah. So here's his mother's last. Here's oh. his mother's name. And his father is Peter because he's a Pedersen. Yeah, so uh, it's yeah. Ari Hag Hagen's daughter. And everything, so I'm trying to do this very slowly, but I'm excited. So everything I find, I'm putting um, a digital archive of the uh, link to it for every person I find on the list. So, yes. so Petter, who's now also used the name, last name Larson for a while, Holmes, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to put, like I've got, so he's mentioned, this guy is mentioned on Lars's marriage his first wife so so every time i'm i'm making sure i'm putting the archive links or the links to even the ancestors who are just mentioned on it because i don't want to have i want to be able to document where i'm getting all this information from the sure. other thing i found was like here's another guy here's a child he came over from norway so the whole bunch that came over from Norway. So his name on in Norway was Jens Larsen. And then he became James Lars Brown when he came to America. 
And I, I just put down whatever the census of whatever said as far as births and things. I don't know if this makes sense. These are just random strings of letters to me in Norway. <laughs> I haven't had time to look. But what I was able to find is that like the mother's name is spelled two different ways. And um, there was one boy, let me go back. There was one son that was in America. It's this Jacob guy, where are you Jacob? And he, yeah. is, he was spelled Jacob, J-A-K-O-B. So he said he was born in uh, America because he filled out a birth certificate later. You know, one of those older births, when you're an adult, you say, I don't have a birth certificate. So I'm going to have a witness say I was born in on this day. Well, he swears he was born in, in uh, Iowa. <laughs> and I, so I had for a long time, Iowa, Norway, I don't know where he was born, but I was suspected it was Iowa because I mean, not Iowa, Norway. I had suspected that for a while. So darn it. I found his christening in uh, <laughs> Norway. I'm like, you sneaky guy, you. So he, he was actually baptized in Norway and I have his baptism. So, so that, that was proof there. But I think that what happens is it's a lot of work to become a citizen. So, you know, if you have a chance to say, oh, no, no, I was born in Iowa, <laughs> it would probably be much easier than trying to fill out all that paperwork. So to make a long story short, they gave this genealogy group in on Facebook just were so gracious and just opened their doors and they just started doing, oh, maybe it's this one. Maybe it's this one. Maybe it's this one. Oh, how about this? And, the, and so I'm going through it, being careful to make sure that I have the right person. And then I'm putting all the different spellings and I'm putting in the notes section and I'm linking to things because it's, it's a bit overwhelming because these are not it's not a language I speak and it's um, a lot of spelling changes. And then I'm putting like alternatives, like this is the year he was born according to this document. This is the year he was born according to this document. And then this year is the one I'm gonna go with. So I'm making a primary. So I'm trying to document as I go. And it's, it's a lot, I think. Can you screen share that death card really quick? Just one sure. more time. It is under, let me see where I put it. Screen share, screen share, this guy. So here he is. It looks like this. It's just a card. It tells you where he died and the day he died. And it gives you the, so mine luckily was more filled out. But they, like I said, they kept saying that it wasn't going to be, it was likely it wouldn't be very filled out. It says Norway uh, for birthplace here. And it tells you how old he was. So that will tell me what is, if I do the math, I can figure out how old he was. When he was but it's born, according yeah. to the informant who may oh. or may not know. Yeah. yeah. Mother's maiden name. Was that on the documents you had? That yeah. It's, it, or something close to that. Oh, okay. So right. it's, um, I'm writing all the different versions of what her name would have been because okay. there could be, there's, there's multiple. But I think I finally decided on Carrie H A A G E N S D A T T E R because that's what most of the documents are saying. But there's this one, and I, I did for a very long time have like all the different spellings with like the O with a line through it, and mm -hmm. it's it gets to be a lot. So anyway, that's the document that started it all, and they were trying to talk me out of getting it because they were like. Yeah. Oh, I don't want you to be too disappointed when you oh, brother. get the document. Are you sure you want to spend your ten dollars? I've only written to you twice now, so I finally said, "Just give me the document already." <laughs> if there's nothing on it, then I make a note. There's nothing on it. <laughs> Susan, can you remind me what the digital archive is that you were doing on Ancestry? The one that I that these people are linking to. Yeah, the yeah, how you're linking the digital national archives, archives. and. And they have, um, I mean, what are you, how are you doing that? I, I'm not doing it. They, they did it for me, but I can show you what one of these links look like. And I was overwhelmed at first. She also, one of the other people said that, um, 
they said there's another archive out there that they're just starting work on, I guess. And the, I guess she says she didn't know a lot about it, but she gave me a link to it and I haven't gone through it. So I didn't really want to explain it because I wasn't sure what it is. But um, here's what. You don't click what it on looks source like. and just. Yeah, I'm putting it. everything that they gave me, uh, but here's what this looks like. Um, this is what they're mainly sharing with me. And it's digital archives, but when I look, it's it goes back to um, the National Archives. So it's it's something in the National Archives. And so it, 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 when you link it, it's linking to that actual page. That's what I'm doing because there's also here's the scan version. So there's a yeah. document behind it. See? Oh, okay. But it's in Norwegian, and I can't translate that because yeah. it's uh it's there, but. So this has all the, you know, it has all sorts of information on here in the handwriting. And, and this so, is stuff that was just all pulled up by people that saw the thing and went, ooh, ooh, I'll dig into it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Wow. So this okay, is go something. back, stop, stop right there. Look, that whole metal is a place in the blue. Yep. It says whole metal local parish. It's a place. This right here on the right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is the place. Oh. And then it says geographic area. And then it says municipal. So look at the bottom. I know, but you have that as the name. Whole metal. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Local parish. Yeah. So they took the name of their parish. Okay. It's 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 or the farm um, or something. Or yeah. So like I said, these are just uh, and they changed names after 1947, apparently. So um you if you click on these things, like if I click on Jens Larson, it would do like Ancestry does, where it pulls up. The same article but it makes that person the most prominent yeah so um and then i was just like translating this right here i translated this word this phrase into um english and it means homeowner and land with borders oh. um, so you can and like this right here this means this word right here means made Pretty fancy work on um, made. Yeah, so she's got a cool name there. But so, so like I said, I'm trying to go through it little by little. I found a couple other people like like Jens and Lars. I think it was. But Jens this is the Norwegian the, archives. This yeah. is the digital archives for Norway. But it's a Norwegian census. It's a Norwegian census from 1875, but it's held oh. in the National Archives. Oh, the Norwegian National Archives. You or do. the American. Right. The Norwegian National Archives, not the US, obviously. Um uh, it says here it's a digital oh, archives National service Archive. from the National Archives. It looks like our, it's, it's gotta be ours. Yeah, so they probably have a huh. Norwegian version on the on their um yeah, because this isn't Records. just Norwegian. This yeah. is a, all kinds of stuff, I guess. Huh. So, so do we do we know what the um, what the the motivator was for the Norwegian emigration? Well, what I from what I've been able to find out, it was very cold, very little yeah. farmland, and uh, it was a hellhole. That's what people have told me. And um, the oldest son inherits, so oh. all the others screw it. You don't. If you're not the oldest, you don't have a chance to have the land. And it, yeah, and same with your and the women, you have to marry an oldest. But this guy says he was a homeowner with borders, which surprised me. So um, maybe he came over with his second wife and his kids from his first wife, some of them, and kids from the second wife huh. and settled in Iowa, which is, must have been a beautiful, warm place compared to Norway. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, that's why people live in Iowa. They've been to colder places. Yes, that's what I think. I think they come to Minnesota and Iowa and say, wow, I can I could take my jacket off here. This, this is explains a lot to me now. It's cold. Yeah. It's not that cold here. This is beautiful. This is like Hawaii. So okay. <laughs> I'm gonna interrupt here and um point out to Tetiano that what Susan's been doing is showing a variety of different things that we do here. Um, yeah, and we learn. The, it, it, and we learn, yes. yes. We've been doing this for a few years and, and I've taught them what I know and they've taught themselves more things and we've explored and, and developed. 
So Susan is demonstrating researching a, a, a family, a person, and where all the connections. So she got documents, which is giving her the proof she needs that she's on the right track. Yeah, and it also gave her about that. We can't put anything down unless we have something to back it up because yes. these other ladies will hold you to it. You yeah. have to say, you can't say, oh, I think this is, no, no, you don't get to say, I think. No. <laughs> yeah. you, what, what, are, what is your proof for that? Well, even, if, yeah. even if you don't have the direct document, if you have a series of things that point to it and can be logically supported, you know, you have to have some reason to say it. So the other thing is Susan, uh, a couple of things. So mentioned ancestry.com, which is probably, well, there's a couple that are good database type um, websites to go to. Ancestry.com, familysearch.org um, are the two leading, but there are others. And ancestry.com does have a fee um, and we all have memberships. So if you were to pursue this, we could all work with you. You wouldn't have to get the membership, um, you know, at this point. FamilySearch.org is the website for the Mormon Church's Family History Library in uh, Salt Lake City. And it is free and it is very good. And we all use that, or some more than others. I use it. Um, the ancestry a lot. It, they have yeah. census stuff. Yeah, I will say that the search mechanism on Ancestry is the best, but there are documents in Family Search that aren't. Maybe the index is in, is in Ancestry, but the actual document is in the other. And you know, you learn these things as you go. Um, Susan also talked about recording what she got and where she got it and why she thinks that and alternative names. And that's vitally important. If you can't keep track of what you're doing, you'll, you'll end up doing it again and again and again. Um, and, and or going down the wrong rabbit hole because you, you put the document in the wrong place. Um, the, another thing she mentioned was getting resources and she went out to Facebook. And our Mary, who isn't here, has a Facebook group that's also been very helpful to her. Did, Susan, didn't you also in your yeah um, for Slovenia? Yeah, and, and they and they sent. I was looking for my grandmother Mary Skufska, and then I finally went to this Facebook group, and they said, "Well, her name isn't Mary. <laughs> That's not what her name was in Slovenia." And it was like, "Duh! <laughs> no wonder I can't find somebody named Mary." Duh. Yeah. She says it's much. I, I wouldn't even pronounce it, but it's nothing spelled like Mary. Maria, no. probably. It was ma, ma, with a J. Maria. Maria. I don't know. It was something like it Maria. Was Maria. It was yeah, it was Maria. Yeah, it was like Maria, but in Slovenian. So it was like, oh man, I would have yeah. gotten nowhere. But so they help you in there. If you're nice and you're appreciative and you give them the documents and you tell them how much you appreciate what they did, they're like bending over backwards and Oh, All yeah. I was asking for is a name, and they're still so, finding stuff for me now. So <laughs> After and, I get off this, I'm going to go finish. <laughs> yeah, working on that. Um, I, I think she said some other things, but the, the point I was trying to make is that was a good example of, of the steps and stages you have to go through to, to do that. You start with what you know, which is why I had you write down you know, what, what you knew or suggested that you write down your parents and grandparents and places and names and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and then we start looking for, uh, you know, documents. And Susan mentioned she found a brother. Siblings are really important too, because even if you can't find your person's baptism, you can find a sibling's baptism, say, for example, and put you on the right course. Um, there's obituaries, there's censuses, there's military records, there's an incredible amount of a variety of records that can be done. And I haven't sat down with you and gone through steps about what we could look at next. And we can, you and I can do that and get on Ancestry together and, you know, go through these steps if you thought you wanted to pursue it. Um, do, you, do you feel like sharing with us some of your, well, I, I, 
I, I sort of briefly told them that you're born in, um, <laughs> I lost it. Ukraine. Pardon me? You, you want to mean Ukraine, say right? anything? Yeah, so you were born in Ukraine, but you have Russian ancestry. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Um, you and, want me to say anything uh, about it? Yes. Yeah. Not your story. Yeah. It's your turn. I, I first want... Yeah, first want to like explain what I think I would want to do or how I Okay. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. I very much like Susan's uh, story yeah. and this discovery and this, and this de deciphering stuff. I it's very exciting and I I'm a researcher so it actually talks to my heart. <laughs> all these little bits, pieces of coming together or not coming together. I, I'm not sure I will be able to commit at this point uh, because I, I understand it's, and I'm, I have an obsessive nature. So if I dive into <laughs> it, that's all I will be doing with my life. I'm sure about it. And I cannot afford it to do it at this point, but I would like to still uh, be in touch with you maybe when I can attend attend and see what's going on and maybe get inspired down the road uh, and be more involved so this is my position at this point like uh, what I will be doing next I really it, it's fascinating what you're doing and if if you don't mind like an observer to be presented sure. I would love to come by now and then. Sure. That's one part. Um, the second part is I, I would like to dig a little bit more into my uh, husband's part of the family, uh, which I expect to be very um, challenging. And I probably will start doing it anyway, like even if I don't join your group so maybe if i do it and i need some help i will be asking you for advice and sure advice. sure what's what is, is he is he also from the ukraine um so um uh, my husband uh, was born in russia i i, I know much ab a lot about him mm -hmm. i don't know much about his family my husband passed away in march oh this oh, year sorry. so that's why my situation is very like um, mm -hmm. uncertain at this point yeah. but it made me think about past and future in a bit different way and i the situation with him is uh, he was very alone in this life you know his parents passed away very early before we met mm -hmm. and his sister passed away soon after oh so and after we moved here and we moved here in 2004 uh, we don't have like roots right like we do i mean we do have roots but we don't know much about his um, so for me it's important would know to know more he wasn't he was very hesitant to do it and he was very busy and his life and everything so it wasn't the priority uh but i would like to know more and maybe find somebody maybe who is still alive uh mm -hmm. who i can like connect and somehow uh, keep keep in touch with um or maybe they would want to know more maybe they are searching like just you do mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. their relatives and they just know that somebody moved to America and they cannot find them because the spelling is different or whatever. So, um, so this is like another piece of this problem for me. So I will be doing it, as I said, and I may ask you for help. Uh, of course. Advice. Um, do you, and, and uh, do, you uh -huh. know, do you know where and when he was born? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So... Yeah. I do. This is, the thing is, and this is the same thing with me. His father was in military. He was um, a Navy officer. So my husband was born with, when his father was in service in some location. Yeah. Temporary. Mm -hmm. uh. 
So again, he does, didn't have anybody like no extended family in that location. And then they moved in Crimea uh, where I was born, like in my family, of course. Uh -huh. I didn't know my husband. At that time, <laughs> but that's where we met for the first time. Uh, so I know when my husband extended family uh, lived, uh, they Part of that family was from St. Petersburg in Russia. The problem right now is for me, and I, I, I can um, tell you, like I will take five minutes. I will not take more than uh, from your no, time. Okay. I, was, I was actually surprised to, uh, and uh, good surprised in a good way. I tried to tell Cindy and Pat about my uh, background right where i was born how i sort of like it's very hard when people ask me where are you from it's very hard to even formulate it in a short sentence yeah. because of all the changes in the politics and borders and like i i it's my third citizenship united states <laughs> my third citizenship and the only one i have chosen myself Right, the rest was just happened because countries were changing their names or uh, borders, or, or yeah, borders were changing. And Cindy got it. I mean, this is the first person <laughs> here who actually she said, I got it, I, I completely understand what you mean, lost at the identity, you know, that I cannot explain who I am Ukrainian, Russian, or we all understand. We yeah. got it. No yeah. problem. So that's actually made me think about coming here because those are people who will understand, right? <laughs> I, I understand. That's how Cindy explained that you see it a lot. Uh, when people I use change, the example of an Iowa. Yeah. When people yeah. change nothing about their lives, but everything is changing about them. So um, just really briefly and uh, about myself since I think this is the routine, right? You have. Yes. Uh, so um, I was born in Crimea. Crimea right now has no status international. Right. Yeah. So it belongs to Ukraine. It's part of Ukraine as an independent state for everybody except a few countries and Russia. So for Russia, it's Russia. And I still have my extended family there, my sister and her family. My parents passed away 10 years ago and then eight years ago. Uh, so they are Russian citizens. Uh, they became Russian citizens in 2013, I believe. Hmm. So uh, I remember trying to send something to them. My husband was still alive. So we actually were sending some papers they needed from us. So they were, it was, it, it was urgent. So I needed to use some international service and no FedEx or UPA, not, no post services here in the United States have my hometown in their books. Oh, so wow. It, it doesn't exist. Wow. So that's very, uh, and I have, I actually feel sorry for people who would try to decipher it hundred years from now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had it so, right. So, um, so I was born there when I when it was part of Ukrainian Soviet Social Socialist Republic and was part of Soviet Union. So I was born a Soviet uh, citizen. Uh, so at that time uh, we also had been and here uh, nationality means citizenship back there and for me nationality is ethnicity. So in my passport, I had citizenship, Soviet Union, and I had uh, nationality, Russian. Yeah. I, I was able to choose between my mom's and my dad's nationalities. Yeah. So my mom was Russian. She was born in Russia, in the, in, um, the middle of Russia, in the central part on Volga uh, River. And oh, okay. I, I know a lot about her family. Uh, we actually kept in touch since I was little and before that I am sure actually she's from a very little image uh, image village um, where probably half of the village were relatives um, and uh, mm -hmm. she had a very big family she had th uh, 12 siblings okay. and wow. the part of them stayed in there 
but many of them moved out and they lived all over uh, Russia. I, I don't know if any of them live outside of Russian Federation now. Uh, so she was Russian by nationality, but she was Soviet Union citizens. My father was born in uh, Belarus, uh, but you mean the, Belarus? Uh, yeah. yeah, Belarus. Da, okay. Belarus. Oh, okay. Uh huh. So very close to Slovenia, mm -hmm. all right? Um, yeah. And but uh, he didn't live there, even though his parents were from um, this city in uh, Belarus. But at that time, they already lived in Russia, in St. Petersburg. Um, they actually, so they were Jews uh, by nationality, not by religion. Hmm. So these are two different things, right? Um, but uh, their parents, so my uh, great grandparents, right? were living there during um, Russian empire. Uh, so before 1917, this was the uh, part of Russian empire where Jews were allowed to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was like a line. I don't know the English word for it. Red line. Beyond, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, this side, where, that side, yeah. And it's yeah, where they are supposed to live. But my, they could move out, like if they find jobs or something, but the families were all supposed to be living there. But my, uh, grandparents they actually eloped uh, it, they went to St. Petersburg to study at the university uh, so both of them actually and they were very young but they got married way later it's a different story so uh, my so my father's nationality was Jew in his passport but he was also citizenship of Russia of uh, Soviet Union and um but so I was born in Crimea. My sister was born in Russia in the same place where my mom was from. So when Soviet Union collapsed, um, Crimea stayed in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And it's a separate political issue. I will not go into right now. <laughs> uh, so uh, we all, because we lived there by law, became Ukrainian citizens. So my passport changed to Ukrainian citizen. And I lost my ethnicity as Russian because the new passport didn't have this nationality uh, section in it. Oh. All right, so I have become, and everybody in my family, we, we stayed, we still at that time lived together, became, have become Ukrainian citizens. So Russia suggested uh, some of the, so people who were born in Russia before Ukraine became independent had the right to apply for Russian citizenship. And in my family, I was the only one who had no right to do it. Oh, no. uh, because I was born in Ukraine when Crimea was Ukrainian, but not, nobody applied. Actually, we, st we were very inertial, like, I mean, uh, completely uh, apolitical. So it didn't make much sense for us to do any such moves. So then we, my husband and I came here, actually we came separately just for work, but we got married here and eventually we stayed. Uh, so uh, I came here like just temporary uh, for a postdoctoral fellowship and um, I, I'm working at NPS since 2010. Uh, so in 2015, I got my citizenship uh, but in 2013, I sort of lost my Ukrainian citizenship because Russia invaded Crimea and announced it to be uh, a Russian Federation. Uh, so that's my story in terms of, um, I don't know, uh, family history, if you will. So uh, I consider myself Ukrainian uh, more <coughs> right now uh, because uh, of all this turmoil, just I think out of... Um, I just don't want to agree to what happened, uh, but I don't have Ukrainian citizenship. I had to renounce it because I work for the for DOD, and uh, uh, I cannot have a double uh, citizenship. citizenship. Well, you can't have double citizenship if you work for DOD. No. Oh, interesting. No. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Uh, you can't have spot loyalties. I think she was also saying she can't 
go to the Ukraine. Because yeah, I can neither... go to Ukraine. I cannot go to Crimea. Okay, go to Crimea. Okay. Yeah, and if I go to Russia, I need to get a visa. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not complaining. It's just I think that all this very surreal for me. Yeah. It yeah. never makes sense to share it with others because it doesn't make any sense. No, no, it oh. makes sense. But, but I, I'm sharing it with you. Yeah. We got it. <laughs> no, yeah. Literally yesterday, I was talking to a gal in Monterey. Uh, she works for a financial planner, and I've known her for a couple of years now. She went to she graduated from Monterey Bay University, mm -hmm. CSUMB, and she hasn't seen her mother in six and a half years because her mother lives in Crimea. Mm -hmm. Her mom can't come here. So she's going to Mexico in November to see her mom. Wow. And her mom's going to be able to get to Mexico? Yeah. She, and her mom's like, I'm like, well, is she going to be able to go back? Because her mom is actually... Wait. Well, she's Russian, so it shouldn't be a problem to go back to Crimea. But I, yeah, it's very yeah. yes, it's a yes, it's a big to do. I I, I totally understand. Yeah. And what we were talking about finding records too for for Tatiana and her husband would be, you know, who was who was in charge at the time of the birth or the baptism or the marriage or the death of the of the family you know which government would be where we try to find the records um yeah and i want there, if i want to mention one detail you were talking about names right uh, so uh i'm tatiana my husband's mom names was tatiana uh -huh. my husband was married before like many years ago and his first wife name was tatiana as well <laughs> Very, very, I mean, it's very convenient. He never called me another woman. <laughs> <name, right? laughs> yeah. So, but in documents, like in our marriage certificate, all three Tatianas are there. I, or I, I'm not sure about marriage certificate, but some documents or marriage license, or maybe some documents we were submitting to, yeah. mm -hmm. to um, USCS, uh, to the immigration service i don't remember but they're all three names are there and they're oh, all they're spelled there. differently oh, even though oh. those are completely same names yeah so when did you immigrate tatiana oh, can you say it again 2010 oh so we came here um 2004 Oh, oh yeah. uh -huh. uh, but we, we were all like separately on different visas so it was temporary, and uh, I think I got my um, I got my green card in 2010, and then citizenship in 2015. Okay. So Tatiana, what do you do if you are a citizen and have a passport from a country? You come here and you're working, and while you're here, your citizenship changes because of some sort of political deal what what do you do for a passport to go back do you I go to i didn't do anything actually I mean, what would you do i mean do you go to the embassy of whoever is in control now or so, so what happened i can only tell you about my situation yeah. right because it's so i was ukrainian citizen when uh, russia uh, when when you when crimea became has become russian part yeah. of russia right uh, so there was a very, um, and I, I want to ask you something. Uh, I know we are recording. This is fine if you keep it uh, like. Do you want us to turn the it off? We can turn it off now. I decided to put it back on. I need to step away for just a second. So, well, maybe a minute. You know, that could be. That could be a real boon for Mary to have access yeah. to somebody that reads the Cyrillic alphabet. Yeah. yeah. Didn't Mary have some stuff that was in Cyrillic? Something. Yeah. I can't remember. I know well, I was trying to recall what Mary's thing was. Yeah. It's we'll just amazing her. how you can just be going about doing your daily whatever and your citizenship can be changed on you repeatedly with 
through no action or movement on your own, just being in the same place, it can just switch and then switch and then it has consequences yes. based on who it is. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. I, but a lot of the world lives that way. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It, that's like a form of, I don't want to say terrorism, but I mean, that's a very stressful thing. I mean, the, the citizen, your citizenship is a big deal. Well, and that, that whole feeling of having absolutely no control over it. I mean, there's no choice or anything involved, no decision involved, not even hard choice, but we have to leave because it's awful here. You're just always in the same place and somebody else is arbitrarily making you a different citizen that affects everything you do and how you can move around the world. That's crazy. I remember when I was in Egypt um, and I was on, we had gotten there by ship. And when we were, there were um, people on the ship that wanted, I think we were, ended up in Cairo for like six days or something. And there were a group of students that wanted to go over and do, go to Israel and do the Holy Land tour. And at that time, this was 78, they could, go and do the tour in in um in israel but they had to go from the ship to the tour in israel and back to the ship they could oh. not be on <coughs> land in egypt because they couldn't go through egyptian customs and have their passport stamped and then go to israel oh yeah i'm sure israel would frown on that Right, so they got they got to choose one or the other, and they had to stay in it because usually when we pull into the ship, all your passports are turned in. They do all the custom stuff. They give you your passports back, and you're good to go. They had to take all those people and separate them out so that their passports didn't get processed by Egypt. They huh. never got to leave the ship and set foot around Cairo or do anything, and had to immediately go so that it didn't have that other. And you're just going. The That's world is so complicated and it's getting more complicated. And she has an excellent point in the future. Good luck to people trying to figure out, find relatives and figure out his citizenship. And they're going to be you, like, what? I mean, and you'd have to know like year by year by year. I mean, that's crazy. And, and they, I didn't, I they, didn't know there that are two citizenships, you know, she yeah. still has two. Yeah. Well, and she could have had another one. She could have had Russia. Well, she renounced it now, but at yeah. the time she had two. Yeah. 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 And I didn't, I didn't know that, I mean, because the dual citizenship for U.S. is fairly, that hasn't been around that long. Mm. It used to be the U.S. you couldn't have dual citizenship. Right. And I think it's probably only been the last, you know, maybe 20 or 30 years you could have yeah. dual citizenship. But I didn't realize that you couldn't work for the DOD. Yeah, no, I never thought about it. I mean, it makes sense, but. Yeah, but you can work for the DOD and not be a U.S. citizen. You just can't work for the DOD and be a dual citizen of the U.S. That's, That's weird. True. That's true. Yeah. That's. I mean, you don't have to be a citizen to be in the, mil in the U.S. military. I don't know. A lot <laughs> of non-citizens of the U.S. military. That was in the early 60s, that was a huge throughway for Filipino um, immigration, is joining the US Navy, serve time in the Navy, and then by that, you got the right to become a US citizen or to at least emigrate. It's just crazy. That's true. And Puerto Rico, like, I don't know how long they've been in territory, but you're right. I think they came that way. Yeah, before that, they were Spain, right? So same thing happened to them, right? Puerto Ricans were Spanish citizens until they weren't, and now they're U.S. citizens. I didn't know they living, living in the same place, do whatever. It just depends who's in who's in charge, right? Oh my gosh! I know. We live such a, a ridiculously sheltered life from yes, we from do. the way that ninety percent of the world lives. That's just yeah. Hey, Cindy, how does Pat how Pat meet Tiana? In Toastmasters. Oh, I thought maybe. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I thought I said, no, she joined Toastmasters. She's been there a while, a couple of years anyway. And, you know, sometimes I say hello to people before the meeting gets going. And um, she's heard me talk about 
sometimes I attend the meeting, they'll, they'll give me a question, a spontaneous question, and I'll talk about this or that. Or one time I did a off the cuff to, uh, speech about genealogy. Unfortunately, she wasn't there that day, but Aww. she's always been just slightly interested. And in, um, we took her to breakfast oh. here. Not too Do you know what ago. her discipline is, Cindy? Um, statistics and that kind of thing. Yeah. She ran, I, sh I should have had her say, she was saying the courses that she's taught and it's, you know, statistics, probability, something or another theory. Uh, I, some of them, I didn't even know what they were. You know, like beyond she, anything I could comprehend, I have a feeling. She's yeah. smart. Girl. Well, she has a PhD, <laughs> I think she said, so, yeah. The rigor of being a researcher by trade yeah. gives her a really interesting, <laughs> I think, a roadmap on how you approach things. Yeah. Does she have children? I don't think so. I, I, I've never quite blank asked her, and it's never seemed to be an issue. She probably doesn't because she didn't mention. I would have no. thought that when she was telling us about why she wanted to know these things, yeah, that she would yeah. have mentioned for my, you know, my children, for my children. Like to know. Yeah. Although they've been married them. for a while, but yeah, I, in, in, as far as her husband's death, I don't know anything about it other than it seemed like it was sort of sudden, but I don't know. March, that was just really recent. We are in a pandemic, so it makes you think. No, this was, well, yeah, I guess. It's in March. March. Yeah. But she didn't. She didn't say. She's not no, said it. Find her. Well, I'm sure she feels very uh, alone in a lot of ways because yeah, she just isolate her. She has a heavy accent, and she probably feels like people can't understand her or understand yeah. her. That's part of why she joined Toastmasters. Where even they probably couldn't even pick Crimea out on a map. Right. I'm not sure I could have just. Well, we only know now because class. of the whole Mary thing. Yeah, because we really sat and looked at it on a map. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. And yeah. then she was explaining about the governments back and forth. And, and I said, yeah, I get it. And I used her example of an Iowa farmer who doesn't move, but as the county filled with population, the county gets divided. And, yeah, you know, he hasn't moved, but his record's in different places. And she goes, oh. You know, yeah, it's, like, it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, we get that. Are you Republic of Ireland or are you the UK? It just depends on how far north you are. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And what year we're talking about, right? And what year we're talking interesting. about. Interesting. I didn't realize that that anybody used Jewish as a nationality. I was really curious about that. I would yeah, me too, but back, I I'd like her to explain that more because that yeah. doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how I, could he be a Jewish nationality but not be Jewish? Well, there are some people who are of Jewish ethnicity who don't consider themselves Jewish religiously. And right. maybe that's what she's well, that's not what she said. Yeah. She says her nationality. nationality was well, I suppose yeah. if you if you were linked, claim that you were linked to the lost tribes of Israel, you could be a non-Jew religiously. You could have left Judaism and gone to something else. But what would your nationality be? You probably would be, if your nationality is those people that are linked to the lost tribes, then yeah, no, it's I, Jewish. I, that's I, very I odd. Ask her, they but... just be like whatever they were born, like whatever country they were born in at the time. And well, that's what we think of. Culture. That's what we think of for nationality, but there is no, I mean, before 56, there was no national home for Jews, right? Right. That's Wouldn't they say they're Israeli? Yeah, but Israel's only been around for 50 years, 60 years. Even if they've never been in Israel, would they be a citizen of Israel? I don't know. This is so confusing. Yeah, I don't know the answer, but it just seemed odd when she said that. I thought. Well, until World War II, Lithuania had the largest Jewish population in the world. Oh, that's interesting. Yep. And New York did. Yeah. And, 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 and they got and pretty much wiped out during World War II down to almost nothing. In Lithuania? You know, Hitler's I, group. Yeah. I wouldn't know where Lithuania better. was. And they were the last to Christianize. They're up by Estonia, Latvia, to the left. How of do you know this factoid, Tamberly? She's looking at Because right my now. husband was Lithuanian. Oh. Yeah. Was he Jewish? No. But the interesting, well, his parents, who were both Lithuanian, were Catholic. But whenever you mention Lithuanian to somebody who's Jewish, 
and they asked if you're Jewish, and you said, no, no, he was Catholic, and they went, yeah, well. Oh, that they were forced to change it. Maybe that's yeah. the story now. I mean, that's kind of, you always get this, this eyebrow mm -hmm. up because it's so unusual, and Lithuania was the last to, to convert to Christianity, and the, the kind of feeling, I think, among Lithuanian Jews is, yeah, yeah, you say you're Catholic. It's a cover story. It's a, cover. it's a cover story and that's why you're still around and you might have been Catholic for now four generations, but that's not you, where you, you have are. a Torah uh, oh. hidden in your house somewhere. Yeah. Her husband, did he ever do his, he never did his DNA, huh? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, that if so she my had sister children, they could do their DNA and- Oh, your sister-in-law did? did yeah, her, my sister-in-law did, did hers, yeah. And did it come back Jewish? No. Well, I have no, she didn't, I don't think she had any like Ashkenazi or anything, but, huh. but, but, but maybe he did, who knows? I mean, cause you're, you're not going to have the same DNA as your, as your sibling necessarily. No, but I mean, I have like this little Russian Jewish, yeah. 1%, you know, or. I yeah, I don't know. Or she's just not talking. Yeah. Who knows? Well, yeah, well, the uh, Tatiana, I was thinking about her not having kids if she because she was saying she wants to find her. She would be interested in finding her husband's family, somebody. And I right. thought if he had if he didn't do his DNA, which I'm sure he didn't, yeah. it's going to be very unlikely because he doesn't mm -hmm. have kids. Uh, if, if they don't have kids or there aren't children somewhere and yeah. they said that his sibling was dead and his parents could have died, cousins. But, but how are you going to find him? She says there's she nobody. No, she knows where he was born. Well, and when? So DNA is kind of. She can know through perfectly. records and not through DNA. <laughs> yeah, it won't be through DNA. <laughs> Just do it the old fashioned way. If the records are available, then that's where a group might help her. And DNA but, gets so tough when you are from a place, like she said, her parents were the village, half of them were all related. Right. And that's where DNA gets really muddled. Because if you're from these small little little villages and you're related to most people, then how do you even sort anything out? Well, no. So, you know, there's, we'll see. I'll talk to her and get clearer what she wants. But, you know, family search, I, I did peek and family search has got guides for all these yeah. places and things. And I bet the Soviet Union was very big on records. Because oh, they yeah. were keeping book on everybody. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you think they, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's available to the public. Is another. I was excited about the Norwegians because, oh my gosh, they were on it. About mm -hmm. my that kids. was impressive. Yeah. I was like, well, wow. the, other, the other question is, okay, so say the Soviets were really big on record keeping. Who's the custodian of those records now since the Soviet Union was disbanded? Well, Russia. I don't know. Russia? Russia? Or but, would they be, would her records still be in Crimea? Well, do they go or back to the some country they used Russia? to be before they were part of the Soviet bloc? Do they stay with whoever had the records? Do they just, oh wow, that's a weird. Do they make a copy and it's in two different places? So those are all questions that the researcher has to figure out. And that's where a group would probably help her quicker than anything. You know, a Facebook group or Right. Yeah, that is really she, nice. she yeah. can, clearly she's not the first person this has ever happened to i mean right. right right and i would i would be surprised i would not be surprised if i found if she found out there was a lot of family wondering what happened to that those that you know her and her husband who went to uh, america yeah I'm sure they'd be like oh and we have a cousin that went to america i don't know what happened to him after that or you know i think they'd be interested in knowing that especially Maybe they could come visit. They'd say, "Yeah, let's go to let's go visit our but family." But they remember her sister still lives there too. Well, she so. says she knows her mom's family, right, in Saint Petersburg, but not her dad's family and her so husband. She's not. She's not Crimean oh, by yeah, anything Crimean. other than having been born there as a as a nationality, but not right. an ethnicity. Yeah. But her she, sister still lives there. Yeah. She, she's speaking um, Russian and Ukrainian. Um, what she tell you about that? She probably does. I mean, yeah, so, I think so. Because in the Soviet so. Union, they made everyone, East Germany, all of that had to speak Russian. Yeah, I think she can. 
Well, for sure, Ukrainian, I think. I mean, okay. even in Belarus, they speak Russian, so. Yeah. yeah. So because our exchange student, even though she was from Zurich, Switzerland, I probably told you this a hundred times. No. She's from Belarus. I mean, oh. her mom is from Belarus. Yeah. And oh. married the Swiss guy. You know, the dad was one of those that wasn't in the picture at all, ever. So, yeah. Yeah. anyway, so I don't know. I I got the impression even before that she probably wouldn't be like joining us, joining us. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly not two hours every Thursday afternoon. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but so. I think she was totally intrigued. <laughs> I've got, yeah, I think she might be found hesitation. That. Really, was like, and wow. Susan, you were you were. I mean, I it, you had something to talk about in research, and I just kept making notes. Okay, she did it. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So then, when you were done, I'm paying I attention. I even take notes part of the time. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm, I'm a good researcher. As long as we can add the social element into it, as long as I can find a way, at least in my head, to think of these people as people, and and then yeah. I'm, yeah. then I'm I, I'm connected. But if it's just dates and and places Things, yeah. farms and stuff i'd be like oh you know it doesn't stick in my mind at all but yeah Bella hastings 1066 that's all yeah. i got <laughs> Bella hastings. so we have um uh one of the people on the facebook chain that that's writing this stuff and like i said i haven't gotten into it in detail one of them says um i think this child was born out of wedlock and and she's and the person tags somebody else in the Norwegian group. Is that what you think too? And they're like, yeah, it sure looks like that's exactly what happened. And then they came to America. And I'm like, ooh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> I like the drama stuff, you know. It's kind of like, yeah. oh, they're humans. They're really like people, people, people. You know? people. So I'm yeah. sad that it's not my family too, but in a way, I adopt them all under my little umbrella of of. I care. I'm telling Mark, and Mark told me yesterday, I was telling him about the Brunhart or Brun, Brunvert or whatever. Yeah. He says, I remember my grandmother talking to my great grandmother about <laughs> a man named Brun or something like that and how he, oh. he something about him not coming there or whatever. And I said, ah, that could very well Interesting. be. Interesting. Because it would have been her, his grandmother's mother's husband he came over from Norway so it could have been they were talking about it because this isn't too far back as far as I, I'm talking yeah. about, you know these people he died in 1901 but his kids came over from Norway also and some of those people died in the 60s and yeah. mm -hmm. so they were alive and, and probably somebody discussed it in front of Mark saying oh your great uncle Peta or whatever his name is oh he just died and you know we're we're gonna send them a flower spray or whatever they did i don't know <laughs> some some fish <laughs> any do with well, the norwegians my <laughs> mystery is still trying to figure out where the 16 percent of norwegian dna that i carry came from because nobody other than you have that much right yeah that's a lot yeah or for something that nobody in the family they're going what norwegian oh. yeah Ooh, yeah but you've got you've it. got don't you have um the vikings right how, yeah. how how much do you like fish yeah <laughs> how well do you handle the cold hey this is my first project where i used a norwegian twisted cast on thank you very much so there uh -huh. <laughs> oh wow what does that mean <laughs> it means it gives it a really pretty edge oh are you making crunchy. a sleeve a cast on the way she started it uh, what is started. it cast it onto the needle uh, Cowl. Oh. oh, oh, okay. Damn, really something else. Oh, and my project's almost done. Tomorrow Yay. I get to paint. Today they finished. The Tomorrow I. Where's the floor last? Well, I'm going to try to do the floor on Saturday. We haven't bought the floor, but I want to paint all day tomorrow. And mm -hmm. we don't have lights hooked up in there, so we can only work during the day. Oh, and, okay. uh, I think Saturday he's going to bring me, I think he's coming in Saturday or Sunday to put the light fixtures on. Oh. And so, you know, I, I, I want to put the floor in on Saturday. I don't know. This is going to be weird, but then once the floor is in. RT? And you're putting that down with mastic? No. You don't put it down with anything. It's peel and pop? Mm -hmm. Is it? 
It's a lock in place. It's, system. it's a lock in place. So you have to have the border, the border to keep it all down. I guess. Yeah, you've got to put like an edge border because that's what keeps the floating floor from popping up. Floating up yeah. whenever we have an earthquake or somebody yeah. like gets gum on their shoe and they pick it. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're, today they're finishing off. I have escape, escape hatches. I have five escape hatches, ha five escape hatches into the ceiling. So in we can storage. Ninjas attack. I, Most people yeah. would call them accesses, but she calls them es escape hatch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because in the 10 by 10 room of Mark's, there's an escape hatch they're putting in. And if you go up it, if you were to go up it, you'd be able to go out into the garage because it's not going to be, yeah. uh, it's it's open to the rest of the garage. So you could escape through that way if you want. <laughs> so, I do need five. Because I don't you want. In our neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> because because um, I'm too old to be climbing in rafters, which is what I've been doing. You go up in one and you could just go through the whole thing like a maze. Mm -hmm. right, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm 59. I'm not doing that. And I can't, I don't have high enough ceilings like Tamberly does where you go up and you, you have a room. So I don't have that. So what I, what I, the deal is that I worked out is that they put extra plywood down so you can go up on a ladder and you go through the escape hatch and then you have area in front of you to the side of you, to the side of you and behind you and maybe a little catty cornered and you can put stuff. And that's, it in those five places. I do not want more stuff because we're just putting stuff up in the rafters because there's space to put the stuff. So everything in the rafters is going to be go up, reach, and you can get it. So it's not like, oh, I have to climb up into the, right. to the rafters and then crawl along like a little mouse that I was doing before. And wow. then like 110 degrees up there and then drag the box to the edge and like, okay, can you catch it? <laughs> I'm gonna lower it now. Yeah, yeah. That's what I've been doing. So I've gotten rid of more and more and more and stuff. It's amazing. So after I paint tomorrow, I'm gonna start putting stuff in and then the floor, I'm so excited, you guys, you don't know. I haven't had my garage. I haven't seen the floor of my garage or I haven't been able to play pool for three months, three years or more. I have a pool table that's sitting there waiting, calling my name in the middle of the night. I hear <laughs> <laughs> raccoons started came in out behind my uh, last night. They were under my door and my window, and I recorded them there. It's so creepy though. <laughs> and just all these noises. I'm like, so I'm like record, recording them. Like this is like that is just weird. They're just so scary sounding, I, and I don't know what they were doing. They were eating something. I don't know what they were eating. Your fruit. No, they didn't touch any fruit. Really? Mm -hmm. I thought it must be bird, my bird feeders or something, but they didn't touch that. There's, it sounded like they were gnawing on wood like beavers, but no. But anyway, I'm sure Mary's just engrossed with this conversation. <laughs> my, my, Hi, Mary. <laughs> Hi, Mary. What's your hair? Oh. <laughs> we're talking, we're, we're um, I think that, I think it would be Tatiana checking in once in a while would really, really uh, be good for, well, good for all of us, but I think it would be good for Mary because especially with uh, being able to, you know, understand the language and yeah. and so on. Because I, I, I feel bad for Tatiana because that's going to be hard. Yeah. And America yeah. is like a piece of cake compared to this other stuff, but at least she does understand the language. Yeah. 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 But she could ask her sister, maybe, could you sure. oh, look oh, yeah. at this? Sure and see what she really wants to do and you know how much it is an odd time of the day we're meeting too so, so some people who are working you know yeah i think we tried night and it didn't work or it wouldn't work for most of us or, mm. well, I think we used to come to your house remember yeah right so no I don't, it seems it like it's a pretty this is a pretty good setup to do on zoom because we can look at our stuff we can Go on yeah, a computer yeah. research. Right. We can yeah. share our cats with us, and you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I like Look at them. They're I here like together. Them. They're not you fighting. Can, That's a shock. You can I'm share fine. more easily because everybody yeah. can really see it, and yeah. you can blow it up really big. And exactly. Yeah, yeah. Zoom is Zoom has been a boon for us. I think too. Absolutely. All right. Well, absolutely, dutifully. It is two twenty-five. What do we want to do now? Well, I we did want to share 
just I thought about it. Cindy shared with me, but to me, oh. it was such exciting news. I just have to share. It won't matter to Susan and Tamberly, but so, you know, I, that Jenanette, it's the French yeah. like, ancestry. One that translated it to cap? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, anyway, because I have not devoted the time, I'm still coughing up, you know, whatever it is. Twelve ninety nine for three months. I don't know. <laughs> I keep paying it, whatever it is. Maybe it's monthly. So Ancestry.com bought them. Oh, oh really? wonderful. Yes. Yes. Oh, my so God. Does that mean you have to have the World Explorer membership to get to them or not? I don't know. I'm just hoping somebody will find me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Or find my Do you mom. have the World Membership? Uh I, you must have my yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you would. But did I just they, did yeah. you ever hear anything more from that one woman that was down in LA that was managing? No, no? I don't know what happened to her. I looked just a couple days ago to see um if she had even checked into Ancestry and it had been like six months. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh. I hope she didn't die or something. I don't know. Yeah. But honestly. 48,000. I, yeah, you find I that don't dubious. know how much she could even help, but yeah, I do have a question about uh, ancestry. If, if you have an answer, great. If you don't, don't think that you have to find it for me. I have, um, I have, I don't have the world version because it just seems so expensive. I didn't think I'd use it very much, and I just asked one of you guys who has the world if I really right. need to get into it, but. You know, I'm a Wikipedia editor and they have these libraries and they uh, you're allowed to check out for free a memberships for all kinds of stuff, Jed, huh. all kinds of journals and stuff like that. You just have to apply and you have to have so many edits and you have to be on Wikipedia so long. And I, I, I'm, I easily fit all that. So that's how I have newspapers.com for free. And so one of them was Ancestry. So I applied and they gave me my ancestry membership and I said, I'll just sit and wait on it because I've already paid to a certain day. Yeah. So my ancestry was coming up and it was going to end in September 1st or September 30th or something like that. And so I said, okay. So I went and I joined in with the login and everything for Wikipedia to be able to get in it. And it gives you world. Oh, I think. Hey, right. Yeah. But that's the problem. I think you have to rescribe every year or something. I don't know. That's how I have to do with newspapers.com. But the problem is, is that I have a new username and a new account, but it does, I don't know how to link my current account oh. to this Wikimedia uh, account they're giving me. I called Wikipedia, uh, I called Ancestry and I got one of those Olive Garden kind of people. Yeah. Hi, I'm so happy to help you today. How can I help you? My name is Elizabeth and I'm here. You know, and you're like, just give me the information I need and let's yeah. go with that. You're, you're yeah. already annoying me with your personality because I know it's fake. Nobody is like that ever. So um, I told, <laughs> they just get on my nerves when it's so fake, you know? So mm -hmm. she, um, She's, of course I can help you with that. Let me get your information. So I gave her the information and she canceled my oh. membership. No, she says everything will be fine. Nothing's lost. We'll cancel it. So it's ended on the last day I paid to, whatever that is. But she couldn't figure out how to link the two. And she acted like she never heard of that. Before. Oh, I'm sure we can do that. I have no idea how. I've never <laughs> heard of anybody asking, but I'm sure we can. And so I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, she goes, so she wanted me to reach out to the people on Wikipedia and they're just like volunteers. They're not experts or anything like that. So he came back to me and he says, I even asked somebody else and I don't know how to do it. So I, so I need to call ancestry again, but I thought maybe I should wait a little longer for my ancestry membership to maybe end and then link it. Or something. Well, Susan, what if you, what if you went on your new account? What if you went on your old account? your ancestry account and allowed the new Susan on the Wikipedia account to have access. Would I get my DNA? Like to no. share it. Oh yeah, I would get my DNA. Be, I... The new Susan should be able to go in and see and edit and add to and do everything on old Susan's account. 
Now that's an idea. Well, that that's the DNA, but what about the rest of it? No, I mean, I mean her her tree and everything. She I'd be considered her... like I can edit Mark, and I yeah. can edit. Right. Yeah. Well, that's my tree, but. So if old Susan gives new Susan permission to edit and access old Susan's tree, then old Susan just yeah. never touches it and new Susan does all the playing. And do you have both my accounts? username to new Susan at Yahoo or whatever, you know, change it to, that's a really good, I mean, that may be a better workaround because I, I dealing with these friendly people just kind of gets. <laughs> but, do you have both accounts? right now yeah I, at this moment i have both accounts because i i logged out of the wikipedia one because i was looking all over trying to figure out how to merge yeah well, so you can test it and see if it works but it should yeah I mean, because, because i, I can do a friend's account and i can go in there and look at it and change stuff and add stuff and yeah i just have to be labeled as an editor um mm -hmm. I, you have to have like I, full access full access yeah because i i noticed that i could get in it says that only people who have full like full editor privileges can see notes. Right. So if you have a public tree and people can look at your tree, they can't see the note section. Right. So um, I, I write lots of notes on Mark's page. So, you know, that probably would be a I lot easier is to do it that way and then just sign in under the Wikipedia thing, change the name, obviously, and change the password. Because that would be cool to have world access and it and for free. Because that's like right. what's three oh, yeah. a year or something? It's three hundred dollars for the whole for the that much. And that's not getting newspapers in the military fold three. Yeah. Oh, and that's the other thing is I have fold th three for free because of Wikipedia. I'm telling you guys, yeah. you want to become Wikipedia editors and, and just go in and correct spelling errors for a few months. And then we can sign you up for this. You can get all the newspapers. I started to look at that, but I need to. I need you to show me, like, how to edit or what to do on Wikipedia because I don't understand it. I'm a trainer. That's what I do all day long. Well, you don't train, train your neighbors. You need to train your neighbors. If you want to learn, I will train you. That I love training. Okay, good. I can teach you how to edit Wikipedia. No problem because then in six months i could get everything from free and the little scottish side of me would be happy <laughs> <laughs> you, could have, you could have newspapers.com you could have fold three you could have ancestry with the world and any journal all tons of journals i'll send newspapers.com is such a rabbit hole but it's oh my gosh there's another one there's newspapers archive that i have barely mm -hmm. started to explore and i've looked at it and i said i'm not sure this is so much better than um let me put it right here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Cause I keep telling my editors, mm, eating a pencil. I have a hundred and something editors that work for me, and I keep telling them, "Look, guys, you can get this for free." And a few people, a few people have taken it up, but not nearly as many as they could. But um, newspapers.com is so helpful. So an editor just has to correct spelling errors and punctuation errors. Whatever you want. You have to have, you have to be an editor in good standing and you have to have so many edits. Mm -hmm. um, I think you have to have been on Wikipedia as an editor for so many months. I think that's, a, I think that's the uh, requirement. And so then you just go into this library card thing they have, as I'm trying to find it. Do they embrace people who correct grammar and sentence structure? Oh yeah, some yeah, some people that's all they do. They go in and correct U O U Y O U R to Y O U R E with apostrophe. And that's that's their life is I, I, I'm, right, I'm right with that group. Okay, here's the link. Um I will screen share. This is all the options. I didn't realize I was gonna turn you guys into Wikipedia editors, but I mean I can. So here's the Here's all the stuff you can, you can you can get. Now, like I said, I think you have to subscribe every year. Here's Ancestry.com. I didn't realize it, but it does include, yeah, it says even the World member world Explorer membership. Um, wow. You guys can see this, right? Yeah. yeah. BMJ. Mm, a lot of this I have no use for. I, I would just fall into, oh, look, drama online. Ooh, drama. Ooh, that'd be fun. Um, it's just so much cool stuff though. Edinburgh. Wow. Yeah. So I don't here's full three. Full three. Yeah. Um 
Gia. I, JSTOR, I used to use this all the time when we were looking at, uh, at transcripts for um, TV shows and stuff like that for Sylvia Brown, the psychic. So JSTOR, we used to use it, I, I don't know, but I mean, I could just fall into a rabbit hole. Here's the newspapers archive and here's newspapers.com. Hmm. Like I said, you, you have to renew, I think every year. There's stuff in other languages. Um, I wonder if there's things in languages for in Russian. Stuff. Do you have to? Do you have to um, keep up with the edits to keep up with the subscriptions? I we, guess so because you, you gotta have it? your you gotta renew Pro it Quest here. ProQuest, Pro genealogy related, Royal Society, God, nature. There's so much stuff there. Crazy. Um, rule scientific. So that's it, and then you can suggest if you want to. If there's things that you think that somebody should a German newspaper for free or mm -hmm. some, some other kind of journal mm -hmm. or something like that, I guess you can say, I think you probably have to become an ambassador and handle the, yeah. you know, people write to you and say, Hey, I'd like to have, you know, Hey, Deirdre, I, I see you manage the subscriptions for uh, FFA or something. Yeah. And, and how can you let me in? And, and you would just say, Oh, okay. And then you would get your subscriptions, but yeah. So, um, that's good to see. I'm glad I asked you guys instead of calling them up again because that that it just annoys me. They're just so annoying. So, Cindy, do you have an eye update? Oh, um, let's see. Since last Thursday, well, I I did have. I woke up Monday morning. Woke up in the middle of the night with with irritated eye, sore eye. That got worse, and I thought, uh-oh, something's wrong. But um, I couldn't get in to see the glaucoma guy, but I had an appointment already scheduled with the retina guy at one o'clock. By the time I saw him, it had subsided in the pressure, but I was worried that the pressure had gone fluey, completely. And the pressure was 19, which is wow. acceptable. That's you very know, good. Anytime it's under 20, it's okay. So, um, and I see the glaucoma guy next Tuesday. So, and then it was fine. I don't know what caused that particular thing. That's the only time I've had pain throughout this whole process. So mm -hmm. I will bring it up, but um, things are going okay. I could see, I could see the big E before blurry, but I could see it. So I could see it today, uh, the other day, and I could see the H, the next one. On. You oh, guys probably don't even get down to that far. <laughs> they probably start to look further. But anyway, so I'm making progress. That's, so I'm at good. that's very good. Or so. yeah, that's and, good. And I am using it more. They, they're working together better. I mean, when it's close work like this, I yeah. cover it. But then other times I flip and make myself just look through the, the surgery eye and I can make the bed and load the dishwasher and you know so making progress uh and then I see after I in the, about a week and a half after that appointment I see the black or the uh, cornea guy again and I'll try and maybe get an idea where we do the part there, there's the first part where it just heals and then there's the second part where he starts taking the stitches out in such a way to focus. And I, then I'll be needing to see him more frequently. And I'm kind of hoping to maybe make some travel plans next summer. So I kind of want to travel, see. travel. Is that possible? Well, maybe I'm really getting itchy for it. But My Washington DC trip got, it was supposed to be the end of October. They just asked me if I would, if I could postpone it till April. Or they'll mail me the award. And I'm like, no, no. I don't care if it was a 2018 award. I'm fine with still putting it off till 2022. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> because it's going to give me a trip out to DC and a dinner and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, yeah. no, 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 that's okay. I don't mind putting it off. <laughs> well, I, I'd really like to go to April or now. someplace. So, but we'll see. I mean, past COVID, of course. But um, yeah, I mean, I could visit my brother. I could visit Jana in Delaware. I could visit Susan in Phoenix. Across the street. Susan across the street. Yeah, Susan across the street too, but Susan, who, baseball Susan. <laughs> so, so, I mean, there's, oh, she's my old college roommate. I mean, there's places I could go when I can do it, but I can't do it yet. 
-hmm. You have the doctor's appointments all the time too. So I have doctor's appointments really all the time. And also it'd be pretty scary to go out there right now if I 20 AD vision oh, and yeah. COVID and all that. So yeah, I'll wait. Around. Yeah, my, my house is still a mess and my backyard is a mess and my driveway is a mess so it's uh -huh. but it's gonna be all cleaned up and oh i, I just for you deirdre i just started 1989 i want to let you know that i did 89 wow i got to i started it last night i've got a little bit done and i've got i was gonna ask you and this much more for 89 my 1990 1991 were all mixed together 89 90, 91 i was like I, I scanned like 89. I had like five things. I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. And it was all shoved into these others. I don't know how that happened, but um, I'm making progress on that. It's it's coming together, but it's darn slow. Well, because Mark slowed you up. Yeah, well, I, it's exciting. And then, yeah, so that did slow me up. And then I get the bait. So, um, so I guess we're going to do um, occupations next week. What yeah, I guess we'll do that. I do have, um, the, well, first of all, in report, I was going to say I got another one, the Kilgallen siblings done over the weekend, so slowly but surely. And for our occupation report, I was looking up some stuff under my um, Pat's Webster ancestors, and I realized I've got the Webster's pretty well done, written, so if I could just get past the Kilgallens, I could push along pretty quick, so. Oh, wow. Um, do you remember I had trouble last week? Well, first of all, Tamberly, do you have anything for show and tell? No. Uh -uh. And, and Deirdre, she showed us her little fringe thing she's making with the yes. Norwegian slip knot. With the cast on. Yeah, that. I, 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 well, add, I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but no, do. when I can do anything, I'm, I'm proud. Um, <laughs> I added, yes. you know, I had made like, you know, extended my tree and then I couldn't get it on I'm like okay I give I so I mentally you know had to be in the right mood and so I added on to the tree that was already there it wasn't how I wanted to do it but that's oh the two, I had things in two different places so um so there are more my tree I think is up to 27 and it was like 23 or something <laughs> okay. so, yeah but it you know I think it should help you well, know anytime you grow is good and then it suggests more stuff to you exactly right I mean, and it, yeah. it was a lot to input I mean because I had a lot of I mean I know it's like oh well wow four people but there was a lot of information yeah oh I know one thing I don't know what turned my father on but oh, I, was, <laughs> I don't know if i want to hear the rest of this <laughs> so i was on the phone with him and i said you know i did my little thing on the canals and i mentioned how you knew a guy who used to be you know a mule tender on the canals and i said you know you said his name was frank is that the same guy that built your guys you know uh stone retaining walls when you were a kid oh and i don't know why i remembered that but i just kind of remembered the name frank clark and he said, yeah, as a matter of fact, it was. And he went on to telling me about Frank Clark and then telling me about this house that they lived in that had all these retaining walls built that was on property where there was an entrance to a mine. Ah, because I remember stories about my dad playing in the mines as a kid before they had to um, block them up. Oh but we're God. having this little conversation. And at the end, he says, well, my father's very formal in his speech. Well, Tamberly." I think I'm just going to have to dig in and start thinking about some of these stories and some of the things I know, and maybe I'll give you a call. <laughs> and you're going to hit record on the Zoom. I mean, I have been asking family. Dad, we're going to record it so that I have, so, so I have it. I know. I have been asking him questions to say he doesn't know anything for years, and all of a sudden he just thought he'd maybe think about it, and then oh, maybe thanks, Dad. Me and let me know stuff. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Daddy. Totally. Your father's really formal. I want to meet this guy. I bet she's really fun. Yeah. <laughs> yes, my father has never called me anything but Tamberly in my life. Well, that's Tamberly. all I call you. What else would people call you? Tam? 
my when I was Lee? a kid, they used to always call me Tammy. Lee? Tammy. Yeah. yeah. Tammy. Tammy. I mean, I just used Tamberly since I started, you know, since I grew up. Did you grew an adult? But, yeah. I don't think he was a Tammy. Well, he probably well figured out Tamberly. Tamberly. He to call you Tamberly, not Tammy. Yeah. Oh, we get to call her Tammy. <laughs> so, um, do you remember I had trouble last week trying to show pictures? Yeah. What the heck? So, I didn't solve the Zoom part of it, but I did do a, um, uh, I must be tired. Um, pow, Pat's, Pat's here, PowerPoint. So, <laughs> He's listening to this. Hi, Pat. Say, <laughs> they say, hello, Pat. <laughs> so let me see if I can do this. I'm gonna go to share screen and, <laughs> Now I'm going to go to PowerPoint and I got to get the right PowerPoint. Yes. Okay. All right. So this is, remember, this was Route 66. Uh -huh. So, okay. Route 66. Can you guys see that? Not no. yet. No. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm recording this. Sandy <laughs> 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 said the S word. Woo. <laughs> All right, well, how Very come? Good. Okay, let me see if I can do it. Okay, let me try this. There it is. Okay. Okay. Yay. okay. All right. Here they are. All right, so let me do the slideshow. Well, she was trying to show us from, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, a folder, a uh, picture. Yeah, so I you put them in. You put them in here now? Yeah, you know, this is a great takeaway because when I did my homework and I had all these photos, yeah, I just dropped them. I thought about that and I dropped them into a PowerPoint, which is great because then they're just in one place. Yeah. 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 I did that for, for our homework this next time too. Yeah. Okay. So these are the Route 66. Remember, we're looking at now. Can you see my pink pointer? No. 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 We can see where your slideshow is open with all the slides on the left, and it says Route 66 yeah. pictures. At click to add subtitle. Yeah, I've got. Um, okay, hold on. Okay, so you can see that, right? Yeah, we see your pink cursor now. Oops. If you shift, okay, to, so if you shift to um, from beginning in the far left corner, we'll see them bigger. Right, but then, but then that's what I did. See, but now you can't see my pink thing. We can't right? see anything. Just oh, yeah. you see what we saw before. Why can't we see that? We yeah. Should, How about you hit the uh, slideshow at the bottom? There's a little tiny. Oh, I hit okay. slideshow at the top. Uh, Can you hit that from beginning, or do from current slide and see if that. Double click on that. Try from no, current double -click. slide. Let me try that one. And you did it change? No. Huh, no. It's like it's like it can only do so far. So how about if you get the slideshow at the very bottom? Is it because you have use pre use presenter view clicked? Use presenter view click where uh, under monitors, right under where it says your name under Cynthia Stanford. Where does it even say that? Oh, oh yeah, there. there it is. Go okay. down. Now yeah. go down. Use it it's clicked. Take it out. Okay. Unclick it. Okay. Now hit from beginning. Now do from beginning. There okay. Good Yay. job, Tamberly. And you can see the pink thing ah, too. Yeah. Learned okay. Something. All right. So now, okay. Well, that's good. Thanks. I'm working. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. You can see. Okay. So this was just that we were looking at Route 40, which is Route 66 through here. And remember, we. We went through Arizona, like here's where the Grand Canyon, you'd turn off to go to the Grand Canyon. You'd turn at Flagstaff to go down to Phoenix, et cetera. And then there's this curve, which is a mountainish thing that we went over. Um, and it, the road, you go over it and you get to Needles. And then you can go across California desert and go north to you know Bakersfield, or you can keep going around and go to into uh, LA. Okay, so anyway, at the part. What does that even mean? 
passing cause. Oh, just a minute. Well, it'll make sense when we hear more. In a about second. That. So when we got to, I think it was a little past flights. Yeah. We, we went off and we went this big curvy thing um, where Route 66 goes. And along that are these signs. And this is, this used to be not just on Route 66, but highways during the highway system. So the series of signs passing, okay? When you can't see, oh. may give you a glimpse of eternity. <laughs> Burma and they, shade. And they like always end with Burma shade. Burma shade. Burma shade. Oh, yeah. shade. That's not on a barn, okay. Got yeah, it. and Pat can remember these. I remember them. You do I know. barns, right? No. No, there are signs along oh, the road. Oh, oh. Anyway, and the kids would look out the window trying to find the, you know, see, because right. it's a little like a poem of some sort. Yeah. So, and you can also see there are railroad tracks. Oh, yeah. That's across Arizona. Okay. So then to reiterate a smaller, you know, closer up, here's where somewhere in here we turned off. And we went Peach Springs and then curved back to Highway 40 at Kingman. And Peach Springs, I mentioned last time, was the inspiration for whatever it's called, Springs um, um, Cars. Oh, yeah. It's called something Springs, I don't remember. But anyway, okay, so then we get here and we make we go up past Oatman. Um, this is the old Highway 66, 40, and we go this curvy stuff to needles. So my pictures are of the curvy stuff. So this is getting going on the road. Now imagine, this is in what, the 30s and the Dust Bowl and you're in this jalopy car packed with, you know, grandma and mom and dad and five kids and mattresses and chairs and whatever clothing you can fit. And you're going up this road that doesn't look that nice, I'm sure. Yeah. And you're getting going up this road and it's the high desert and here's getting higher and you can see the edges are you know, there. Oh man. And they're just keep going and keep going. Now these pictures were taken from our, my, you know, our car for the views, but not necessarily the road, but still see there's the edge of the road. And they must here, be freaking out. I hope it gets better. Yeah, and see the cars or the, the roadway is way oh, over here. Oh man. Look at going across there. Now you're kind of getting to the top of it. You're just way up high. And you can see this one I was having trouble. I think the road is here. This curvy part here. I'm I'm not sure what this is, or maybe the road's across here. That looks and right. Going down here. That's probably it. And see more road over, you, know, you can just see the road and, and look at all those hills and there's California way over there. <laughs> the car doesn't break Yeah, down. needles, no. <laughs> see any gas stations? Yeah, see, can Pat points out, do you see any gas stations? Nowhere to stop if there's an emergency. Yeah. You're stuck so on the road. Good. See, and this is this is probably a maintained road. Imagine what it was then. It is that doesn't down. even look like an <laughs> interstate. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. So now you're getting a little lower. What year was this? I, we took the pictures in uh, 28, something like 2008 or 29, something like that. But um, I'm imagining the 1930s, the Dust Bowl. Yeah. Impression. That, that would be very. I, Imagine with a junky old car, not know, you know, stuff to the gills. I I don't know how they did it. I and then getting higher down blew out. You can't call AAA. Look at that. Yeah. And so again, they went then. Yeah, yeah, and that was just this little. Oops. This was just this. What I showed you is just this little part, right there. And then they got to needles and had to still go across the desert to here. Yeah. And that, I don't know, I, we've driven it several times because we go to, but 
don't know if any of you others have, but it's a long spring ride. training. I, I went to Scottsdale once, but we flew to LA and then drove over. And it's a boring as heck drive. Well, now I see mean, people say that all the time. If you ever go this way, let me know and I will give you 20 places you can stop and see interesting things along the way. <laughs> there are when people say they take the southern route across, is this the southern route? No, oh. the southern route is is Highway 10, I think it is. Oh, that okay. goes so out of LA so. yeah. to Phoenix. And that goes through um, uh, Joshua Trees National Park. Or yeah. It goes way down southern Arizona. Yeah. So anyway, it and I, to be honest, I have not been on that one. So maybe it is boring. But I, I bet you taken I could this route when I was 13 and my parents went, well, oh, well, all the times we've gone to Arkansas, this would make sense. We went yeah. from, we caught over, you know, we didn't go to LA, but we probably caught over somewhere and then hit needles and then. Yeah. Well, time. no needles would be way up here. Yeah. So, I mean, we came down somehow to hit needles. Yeah. I can this, remember going to needles. I thought it was such a strange name. Oh, no. Well, then you went 58 up here, which is, like I said, there, there's a volcano, uh, remnants of volcano. There's a uh, big mining industry up in the hills. There's Joshua trees. There's windmills. There's trains. There's uh what else is there along that line i think i remember going to the petrified Before, forest i mean there's just all sorts of things anyway. i thought we hit four corners too but that's a long ways away from 66 yeah four corners is, to scale. pat says he doesn't think it's to scale but this is four corners way up here yeah so that's a long ways off my parents might have said let's go to four corners and we went and stood on the sidewalk and the little piece of cement it might have been four corners in some other town I no mean. i think it was that one. Oh, because i am i right arkansas is right above louisiana uh yeah okay yeah where well, it has the, the city part my family's right from right about where cindy's mouse was go over to 44 and go down about a half an inch right there is about where my family's from maybe right Maybe a little more north than that, but that's where my family is. So we, yeah, I know. that would have made sense for us to take 66, probably. Because I know we went through Texas, but we well, weren't going 40, that far. Yeah. Well, then, yeah, you probably did go through. That would make sense. But you might have taken a side trip up to Four Corners. Yeah, maybe. But I, or I, I can't imagine, but I, I think we did. I vaguely do. I'm going to have to go back and look at letters and stuff again, too. But yeah, I was bored to tears. No, you're 13, of course you're bored. Oh, it's awful. Yeah. <laughs> Just boring as heck. And they in our old station wagon and pre-Game Boy. Pre-anything. Yeah. I mean, you take a book, you're done. Okay, I'm done with that book. Yeah. <laughs> Very boring. And my parents no, we, we, we took a six-week road trip in 2010. And but and we got to here. No, we got to here. And then we had we went to um, Kansas and and then down into um, Tennessee and then up to Ohio and then back and and spent time in Iowa and Michigan and South Dakota and Wyoming and all these places and we were going to do Arizona, come home Arizona um, or come home Utah sorry but it got uh, way hot and we were way tired so we just kept going and we did a uh, national parks in, in Utah a separate trip. So, I'm looking at Iowa on this map and I don't know it just doesn't seem like it'd be that cold in Iowa right there. Yeah. Look how low that is. Because mm -hmm. you've got all, that, right all the planes just yeah. whipping across. Yeah. yeah it's for Pat says it's farther north than Indiana and Ohio. Look it's I mean Michigan. That's true. Look where it is compared to Michigan. And Michigan gets really cold weather. Yeah. It's lake effect, but see, look, it's the more or less the same parallel as you know southern Oregon, which gets snow and cold. So yeah, my ancestors are all from mm -hmm. right here. And the wind blows all the time. That's my I'm talking about Iowa. Yeah. Anyway, so let's see if I have oh, and then. Remember, we were talking about oh, yeah. canals and locks. So I have a bunch of 
pictures somewhere and they're just pictures. They're not, these two were on my um, computer. So here's a canal in England um, and you see the little canal boat. It's all enclosed and the pathways are there, which I guess would probably were the toad. Oh my gosh, that looks okay. so cool. And then this is Pat and our friend and see this twisty thing? It's turning. Pat on the phone? What are you doing? Yeah, Pat's on the phone. I know. I looked at that too and I went, harsh. Now, can you see back here? There's the canal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and there's a boat on it. Yeah. So if you can imagine coming forward this way, um, towards the front of the picture, beyond that is the canal also. Yeah. And this mechanism is opening and closing the gate. It's connected to the gate. It's raising and lowering the water. It's a so lot. the gate is below where they are, more or less. Okay, so the water was up high as this, more or less. I mean, we're trying to rely on memory and describe it. And so they, they lower the gate and it lets the water out slowly and it tell it the water comes down to this level as low as it is there. And then the guy proceeds along. If they were going the other way, the guy would get under here and they would, let's see how that works. They block it so that the water, no, I'm saying that backwards. How would they the bring it behind up? them? They open up the gate. Yeah, the yeah to gate. raise it. They raise, well, there's two gates. Yeah, there's so two. The uh, upstream gate, they open up and the water comes in. Yeah, and then the canal comes in and then it raises up, the boat comes up, and then he proceeds coming forward. So there's two-way traffic on the canals. I guess so. That's why, they, yeah. why the boats are so narrow. Pat says that's why the boats are so narrow. So we can yeah, so make sense. Can, oh, yeah. yeah. So what I want to know is if the thing that Pat's leaning on as he's talking on the phone there. Yeah. Uh, is that something, is that one end and there's another end off, off a camera? And, and would one man pretty easily be able to pull that? The other guy has a, a part of that too. Yeah, the other guy. If you think of a playground, uh, merry-go-round. Yeah, I can teeter -totter. Yeah, so there's some. There's another end on the other side of this picture. Yeah, I think so, as I recall. But I can't guarantee. So it probably would take two men to push that open. I really wish I had the whole series of pictures because I showed it. You know, the canal water rising up. Yeah. Or lowering down, kind of thing. So it take and, a little bit of time, like a half an hour or something, for somebody to get through that. Yeah, maybe or? I don't know. We watched it. We stood and watched it for half hour, fifteen minutes. Yeah, anyway. yeah. You can, can come in pretty fast once you once you open the gate. Yeah, yeah. I've got these pictures somewhere, but not not scanned and not on the computer. And they so. didn't charge, right? No. No, there who wasn't pays, a pool. Who pays the person who stands there all day and opens and closes the darn thing? Oh. The city? There, was, there wasn't a person. It, no, you have to name is Pat. <laughs> yeah, the name is Pat. We're waiting for no. tourists? I think the canal guy, the guy in the boat, had to do it. It's our no. you know, really? yeah. what did, do you? How did it happen, Pat? Um, the, it seems like the travelers were kind of responsible. Yeah. <laughs> So the they're coming through, but have to get, get out of their boat and go over there and open it up. Well, because you're, yeah. you're stopped, right? So you you stop to a gate, you pull up the, the boat, you get out. Yeah. You shut the other gate, you let the water in or the water out, and then open the gate in the direction you want to go. But and then the run down the steps and jump in your boat. I was going <laughs> to say, so you're the only person on that boat. Yeah. That might yeah. be a problem, wouldn't it? Well, you can tie them. You can tie them. Tie put enough yeah. lead rope on them that they're not going to float away. Just seems like the city should just have somebody dedicated to handling that and just pay them because that would be a pain if it was busy. Well, I think there's a lot of them though. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That's a job. That's a, quite a job to deal with. Was it know. hard, Pat? Was it hard to do? She wanted to know if it was hard, Pat. I don't recall it being hard. No. This guy here is was a, a, a Croxel um, 
relative, one of the potters, real distant. And I think we met him DNA, but I'm not positive. Might have been just researcher. Fellow researcher. <laughs> I'll talk about the Croxels. That's interesting time. because look, this guy's coming in his boat, right? Here he comes yeah. along. He can't see if there's somebody on the other side who's trying to come towards him. So I don't know. Maybe they get up and they go look. They get up onto the top and they look over and they could see somebody's coming and then they'd say, hey, come on, I'll help me turn this. Or <laughs> I don't know, Susan. These are practical matters. Yes. We should know. There's probably I a really video. I wish I had the whole picture. There's probably a video figure. somewhere. Watching the, the car in the somebody. park, you go lift up the garage door, you get back in the car, you pull the car in, you get out of the car, you shut the garage door, and you go. Yeah. Wait. Not if you part. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, the Croxel Pat says the Croxel guy really wanted to see the canals. He wanted us to see. He wanted us to see the canals. That's why Pat was on the phone. Well, yeah, what? I said, we yeah. that was. This was. 2015. So was it worth it? Was it fabulous? Oh yeah. That it looks trip, fabulous to me. Right. It was. We went, we went to London. Let me see the sequence. Went to first. No, not no. No, that's the other trip. No, we went, I think. We we'll have to think about this. I'm thinking out loud. We went to Dublin. We did you know, the tour buses and a couple things and rode a boat on the Thames or Thames and saw Big Ben and, you know, stuff like that. And then we got on a train and we went into uh, the Midlands of England where the pottery industry was that I'm going to talk about. Oh, and man, so this was part of that trip. Because cool. we, we saw pottery stuff and museum stuff, and I'll talk about that next time. But he really wanted us to see the canals. And I should get, I'll look for the pictures if I can find them. Um, <clears throat> and, and this guy was really nice. And we stayed in a hotel. Uh, Where did we stay in the hotel? Must have been up in the right pottery. Right across the street from the train station. I know. That's what I, so we got off the so, train. So is it in the potteries area. Yeah, and he met us in the morning or something that took us all over and we did those cool things. And and then we what happened next? How did we get to how'd you get where? I know we because then after that we went where'd we go? Did we go did we go to Ireland then? We flew to Ireland. Caught a boat. Huh. I don't know how we got across between England and Ireland. Although we were going to go to Manchester and fly, I think. Yeah. Through there. So that might be how we did. Maybe. I'll have to, I'll have to think about it. But we were, on, we were on two trips, and they both involved cruises in Ireland. And this one had, and one had Scotland and one had England. I'll have to think about it. But um, the second one, the second trip, we went to Ireland and then we cruised home, I think. Right, Pat? But yeah, I will. One of them we flew home. Uh, from Dublin? Shannon. Shannon. I don't think it was Shannon. No, Dublin. It was Dublin. All right. I will think about it and get it figured out which trip we did which. But two times in Ireland, long time. It was a nice trip if you had interest in that stuff. Yeah, it was. It was really cool. I like that England trip. All right. So I think. That, yeah, that's the end of that. I'm so pleased that you got it to work too. Yeah, thank you. So it's just, I'm checking something. That's I wonder. A stupid thing. I wonder if that would, no, I don't know. Anyway, so um, I 
it's 10 after three. And is everybody prepared then to move ahead with occupation next time? I started and it's fascinating and I hope I'll finish it. I'm, it we'll probably won't get through everything to next week. So I might, we'll see how I do go to the following week just because I know that I'm going to be moving things in and uh -huh. I'm doing this uh, um, other yeah, stuff. Yeah, I know. You're, you've got bunches of stuff going. Okay, well, I did I'm not watching it. It was really, I was watching a video on how to make, how, how, how to make uh, like dyes and how to, how to make that stuff. And it was just some guy showing like a hobby guy. And that was, I think that was really interesting. And it, it'll allow me to get to the videos on the foundries. The foundry videos I'm finding are all in the forties and fifties. So I was hoping to see stuff more in the eighties. 1890s and things but i guess they didn't have video back then <laughs> yeah but you know what foundry technology didn't change that much yeah probably it's not it's just probably got safer that you heat up and yeah it probably just got safer and that kind of thing and what i was watching was just one guy making stuff on a table in front of a camera and it yeah i, I knew none of it before so it was all very interesting so so far i'm already learning okay I have mine for next week, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be on or how long. So I've got some friends coming in because we're going away for the weekend and I'm not sure when they check her out. This girl's always gone. Huh? It's party time at Tamberley's again. It's cleaned up it, nicely. Didn't we ladies from last time? It's my you know, memorial. Gonna... My Memorial uh -huh. Day 2020 event is finally happening. Oh, <laughs> you know what? What is that? My, my Memorial Day. Uh, 2020 that was supposed to happen with all my college friends we're finally oh. doing it in september we get together every memorial day six yes. and we miss the last two so um, okay so then do we need to have you go first next week okay sounds good you i don't think i'm going to be able to make it tom's sister is coming from oh. out of state oh, just man well wednesday they're dropping off their luggage in the morning and then heading up to Stanford for a reunion up there. And then I think they'll be home for dinner. That's Wednesday. And then Thursday, oh yeah, for sure. Because we're having lunch with Tom's nephew, the, him and his sister nephew in town. And I don't know if we'll be back in time, but the, then we're going to the Rodeo in the afternoon. They leave Friday. So I, yeah, I have to spend the day with them. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, shoot. So I wonder if we should put everything off for a week. What do you think, Susan? Well, if you record it, I'll watch you. Well, if you do, I'm fine with that because I know I'm going to be, you know, busy. So I don't know what Mary's thinking. Mary. Oh, she's. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, we can do that. Don't forget your get your uh your uh flu shots, by the way, you guys. And I got mine. I, already got, I got mine and I've got then I gotta get my shingles. So don't forget your shingle shot. Oh my gosh, yeah, I got that. Horrible. Horrible, 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 horrible. At three today. Oh, do you? Tom is so oh, I can fantastic. tell you how it goes. So let's pass on um the 23rd. It sounds like it if and I mean, go to yeah. the 30th. Really, uh, okay. That's Tamberley, you're only yeah. gonna be here for a short time if you're here right on the 23rd okay that's what we do okay so, so we meet on the 30th does that sound okay to everybody yeah. or what yeah, that's fine. yes i have a zoom wedding this is my first zoom wedding at 2 30 but whoa no. on what day the 30th oh, oh. tom's nephew in new york is getting married at 5 30 ah. so it's Got it yeah okay so Tamberly, i i didn't quite get are you okay with the 30th or do yes. you want to stick yeah. with the 23rd yeah 30th is fine okay and we'll we'll contact mary and let her know okay, okay. thank I you cindy are you going to be home in the next five minutes ten minutes no i'm going to run away no i'll be home <laughs> is it okay if i drop deirdre's book off Oh, oh yeah, yeah. do choir practice tonight. Yeah, so perfect. Perfect timing. Okay. Come back good. by and you can come see my house. Sounds good. Okay. All okay. right. Or Bye. Come back tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.